This video is going to continue in our series about multiple linear regression. We're now going to focus on the version that has unique slopes and a shared intercept. That is one intercept, but multiple slopes for the levels of some categorical explanatory variable. So I'm going to remind us that multiple linear regression is kind of one of the most general models the world of statistics has, and it is thus like the backbone model, the workhorse model of this discipline. We're learning how to incorporate multiple explanatory variables, but let's try to be more clear this time. We can incorporate more ex uh, multiple explanatory variables such that the number of estimated parameters is less than the sample size of our data set. As long as that restriction is true, then the version of multiple linear regression we are looking at will always work. Uh, that doesn't mean it's always a good model, but you should be able to estimate parameters in this scenario. This video is going to focus on unique slopes. That is, we're going to have one slope but be careful, slope here implies that we have a numerical explanatory variable. And we are going to do specifically one slope for each level of a categorical explanatory variable. So that is, there's going to be one slope for each level of a categorical explanatory variable, where these slopes for each level are across some numerical explanatory variable, because you don't get a slope if it's not across or with respect to some numerical variable. You can't have slopes on non-numerical variables. We just call those offsets or intercepts. So we're going to get one slope for each level of a categorical explanatory variable. We'll start with a picture to motivate the idea, and then we will um, end with an example in R. So we are to imagine we have a model that's set up like this. We have on the x-axis some numerical explanatory variable, and on the y-axis some numerical response variable. And we theoretically have data that look something like this. Here is data from level A, and in red we have data for level B. Now what we are imagining is that there's some line best fit through the data for level B, and separately there is some line with a shared intercept that best fits through level A. Now since we're trying to predict Y, oops, I'll go back to my skinny pen, since we're trying to predict Y, we will call it Y hat, and we're going to write out a model. Look, there's one shared intercept, so we'll just call it beta naught. And then there is beta 1 times b, the indicator variable, times x. Oh, whoops. Let's start with a. <laughs> Silly me. OK, the indicator variable a times x. So that is, if you're trying to make a prediction for observations from level a, the indicator variable for a will be 1. Beta 1 times 1 is beta 1 times x. If you're trying to make predictions for the line for, uh, if you're trying to make predictions for observations from level a, you're going to end up with the line that looks like this. And incorporated in this one model, we also have a third coefficient times the indicator variable for level B times x, such that if you're trying to make predictions for observations from the level B, then the indicator variable for A will be 0. That whole term will disappear, and the indicator for level B will be 1. So you'll be left with a line that looks like, look, they share an intercept, but they have different slopes across the numerical explanatory variable x. And this is the general idea 
of what I'm going to call unique slopes. In R, it's not going to be terribly difficult for us to fit this if you've been following along and understanding uh, the basic models that we've kind of built up to get to this point. So we will load our favorite libraries at this point. I'm going to continue to use the data set Finches, which uh, measures Finches' various characteristics across different islands from the Galapagos. And we're going to start by the basic model where we're going to use the numerical explanatory variable middle toe length to explain beak width. But now we're going to try to incorporate the categorical explanatory variable to build upon the model we see in front of us such that we can have one line for each level of the categorical explanatory variable island, where in this case we're going to force all of the uh, lines to share an intercept. I'm not suggesting that's the best model we could fit for these data. I'm just showing us that this is, in the steps towards the most general of models, one of the options. So we'll just call this fit underscore slopes, and we're going to use our function linear model, where we try to predict beak width by um, island interacted with middle toe length. And all of this will come from the data set df. So the term we really need to focus on here is the colon that is interacting the categorical explanatory variable island with the numerical explanatory variable middle toe length. R has no problem fitting this model with relative ease for us. And if we look at the variable we just created, beta slopes, you can see there is four terms in it. Let's see if we can write out this model as we go. We're trying to predict beak width using beta 1, that is the intercept shared across all of these lines, so it is always present in our data set, plus, and then we have beta 2 times Floriana, and that is an indicator variable for finches that come from the island Floriana, times middle toe length. That is, if we're going to try to make predictions for finches from the island Floriana, Floriana will take on a 1, and we'll get a unique slope across middle toe length for finches from the island Floriana. But as it stands, our model has the extra terms, beta 3 times San Cristobal, just going in alphabetic order by the levels, times middle toe length. And the last term in our model is beta 4 times Santa Cruz times middle toe length. And there is the full generality of our model. Beta 1, the intercept, is here. Negative doesn't quite make sense in this context. That's OK. That doesn't necessarily mean this model is bad. Here is the unique slope across middle toe length for finches from the island Floriana. Here is the unique slope across middle toe length for finches from the island San Cristobal. And here is the unique slope for middle toe length for finches from the island Santa Cruz. So if we wanted to make a prediction for, let's say, we need the intercept, a finch from the island Floriana that has middle toe length equal to 20, then we would put in a 1 for the intercept, a 1 for Floriana, a 20 for middle toe length, and zeros for all the other coefficients, since only the indicator variable for Floriana is on, the indicator variables for San Cristobal and Santa Cruz are off. So it doesn't matter if we multiply 0 by 20 in those cases, it will still be 0. 
we will multiply our vector of coefficients by these explanatory values, and then we will add them up to get a prediction for a for the beak width for a finch who lives on the island Floriana that has a middle toe length of 20. And in fact, all of this is encoded in the model matrix for us. So if we just look at the first six rows of the model matrix, we can see the intercept always present. And the first row of this data set is not a bird from Floriana, is not a bird from San Cristobal, but is in fact a bird from Santa Cruz. So this is implicitly a one times the middle toe length of the bird from Santa Cruz. Let's try this one more time just because this one can start to get a little tricky. So we'll go down to the last six rows of this model matrix and consider observation 66, which we can see has a zero for Santa Cruz. Observation 66 happens to be, once I can highlight it, there we go. We need the intercept. It is not a bird from Floriana. It is a bird from San Cristobal. So this is implicitly a one for San Cristobal times 16.5 for middle toe length. And it is not a bird from Santa Cruz because it's from San Cristobal. And contrast that with the last observation in our data set, which is we always need the intercept. It happens to be a bird from Floriana. So this 17 right here is actually a one for the indicator variable Floriana times the middle toe length of this specific bird, which happens to be uh, 17. And this bird is from Floriana. It is not from San Cristobal and it is not from Santa Cruz. So we can see this model matrix is incorporating for us the combination, the interaction we would say between the categorical explanatory variable island and the numerical explanatory middle variable middle toe length. So we can continue on like we've done before. We can predict uh, y hat by applying a function to the model matrix X, specifically down the rows, and we will apply the function that takes a row and adds our coefficients times that specific row. And we are going to insert this prediction back into our original data frame. Even if y hat doesn't live in our data frame, this syntax will create the new column and push it into that data frame for us. And if you spell apply right, this should work. There it goes. And now we can finally make a plot that represents the model we have just put together, where middle toe length is on the x-axis, beak width is on the y-axis. We will color the points by island. We're going to add the points themselves. And we will add a line where we put onto the y-axis our predictions y hat. And I know it's hard to see here, but I promise you this is the plot where when middle toe length is all the way over here equal to zero, all of these lines, one for each island, share a intercept. Now let me see if I can convince you that the slopes are different. Look, 0.95 is really close to 1, but is not equal to 1. And 0.97 is really close to 0.95, which is really close to 1. But again, these are different slopes across the numerical explanatory variable middle toe length, even if it's hard to see to the naked eye. Now, what you can do is continue with the same challenge I presented you in the last video. We could form a challenge that says, try to find the difference in predictions for Floriana and Santa Cruz finches whose middle toe length is 18. 
So make a prediction for two of these lines from 18 and calculate the difference. Then calculate the difference in predictions between Santa Cruz and Floriana Finches, whose middle toe length is, say, 22. Do the same thing over here at 22. Make a prediction uh, relative to each line, find the difference. Then compare the differences. Because we've forced the y-intercept to be the same, you should be able to see a difference in the difference of predictions here relative to the difference in predictions here because these slopes are not the same. Give that a shot. I feel like if you can put that together, you'll have a great grasp on what this model is doing for us. For now in the video, we'll just carry forward because we can make bootstrapped confidence intervals from this model here. And I hope you're starting to see the pattern that these models are really quite similar in terms of how we go about bootstrapping the data. The key part after you copy and paste is you got to remember to resample the observations from the original data set. So we can call boot, let's store it, by passing in the data frame, passing in the function that will calculate coefficients for us, and we'll tell it to run 100, 1,001 times. And from that, let's calculate confidence intervals. Let's see, which index would be most meaningful? It doesn't really matter in this case. Let's go to index equals two and type equals purse. Because we went to index two, that is not this one. That is one, two. Okay, so this is the confidence interval for the slope across middle toe length for finches from the island Floriana. So we would say we are 95% confident that for every one centimeter increase in middle toe length, we expect um, the beak width of finches on the island Floriana to increase by between 0 0.63 and 1.22 centimeters. That wasn't so bad. It's pretty much like a slope before, except we got to pay attention to which index we're looking at so we know which particular island we're making a prediction for. We are still exploring here ways in which we can incorporate categorical and numerical explanatory variables. This particular video showed us that we can force um, the multiple slopes to have one shared intercept, even if that's not what we want. This is an option in our toolkit. We can force the lines to have one shared intercept and unique slopes across the levels of some categorical explanatory variable.